Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. The earth has its kings, but God is ruler of all. Praise God above all, the giver of life. The mountains may tremble, the oceans may roar, but God's presence is more powerful than the earth itself. God created all living things. God created humans in God's image. We are created in the likeness of God. We are a child of God. Come into God's presence, for God is among us now. God, show us your glory. We seek your ways. Come to the rock, the God of life, for God is present now. Hi, thanks so much for joining us today for our worship service. We hope that you find our worship meaningful and a break from the chaos that always surrounds us in our daily lives. We hope that your relationship with God is strengthened during this time. You may want to press pause right now and grab a few things that you'll find helpful, perhaps a candle to light your Bible and whatever it is that you would like to use for your communion emblems. Once you've gathered those things, then unpause us and we will continue in worship together. Will you join me in prayer? Helping the living God be among us now. Show us your ways, guide our steps. Live in us, and that we may be people of steadfast love and hope and prayerful giving. Help us to hear your words, challenging us to give you all the things that are yours. Help us to remember that all we are and all that we have are gifts from you, gifts to the, be shared in service and love. Holy One among us, help us to be holy, people who receive your word with joy and live your message with love. We pray in the name of Christ who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture reading comes from Matthew 22, verses 15 to 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the herald and saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and left him and went away. May God add blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Holy Scripture. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today we return to the Gospel of Matthew and pick up after Jesus has entered the city of Jerusalem. He's gone into the temple and he's turned over the tables and he's shared several parables with his disciples. Today we read about another attempt to entrap Jesus. This time, the Pharisees team up with the Herodians, an unlikely pairing. Their understanding of government and taxes couldn't be further apart. What they do share is the opinion of themselves to be fine examples of upstanding citizens. Their image is important to them. In today's story, they have a common goal to discredit Jesus so that he can be charged with treason, or at the very least, lose his credibility with his followers. And they think they have the perfect way of backing Jesus into a corner. They give him a backhanded compliment, only to turn around and say, tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? The question they pose is beyond clever. Asking Jesus whether it was lawful to pay the imperial tax that funded Roman occupation. Should Jesus answer in the affirmative, the adoration of the crowds would likely not simply evaporate, but rather be turned into opposition. Should he answer negatively, however, then he will have positioned himself over and against the Romans. Never a wise thing to do. So they've got him. At least they think they do. How many times have we been here before? Usually it's the Pharisees by themselves trying to discredit and entrap Jesus. So for us who have the advantage of knowing how this all turns out, it's no surprise that Jesus flips it around and places the scenario right back in their laps. Not only that, but Jesus takes what was meant to be a political question and turns it into a theological one. Whose head is this and whose title? Now, as I read a commentary by David Lose, he wrote something that caught my attention. In the biblical translation this morning, you heard the question read as, whose head is this and whose title? But the Greek word used better translates as likeness or image instead of head. Whose likeness or image is this? The word used in this passage is the same one that was used in Genesis 126. Listen to this verse. Then God said, 
let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. I wonder, like Loves did, how many in the original audience would have made this connection? Jesus asks, whose image is on it? And they answer, the emperor's. Now there's more going on here than meets the eye. Along with that image is an engraved confession of Caesar's divinity, which means that any Jew holding the coin is breaking the first two of the commandments. All of which leads to Jesus' closing line. Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. And with this one sentence, Jesus does not simply evade their trap or confound their plans, but issues a challenge to his hearers that reverberates through the ages right into our own lives. Whose image is it? We were made in the image and likeness of God. And because we bear God's likeness, we are to act like God. Not, mind you, like those who impose their authority over others for self-gain, but rather like God. God, the one who creates and sustains and nurtures, the one who redeems and saves, no matter what the cost. We are called, that is, to serve as God's agents, God's partners, and God's co-workers, exercising dominion over creation, not as an act of power, but rather as an act of stewardship an act of caring for creation and extending the abundant life God wishes for all of creation. In our story today, Jesus calls the Pharisees and Herodians hypocrites, by definition, one who puts on a false appearance. He doesn't accuse them of blasphemy or even disloyalty, but instead reminds them of who they are and in whose likeness they were made. In essence, Jesus is saying, look in the mirror. Who do you see? Perhaps that's why they were amazed and they went away. We all find ourselves at one time or another losing sight of in whose image or in whose likeness we are made. We take on the persona that the world identifies, a wife or a husband, a father or mother, an athlete, a scholar, or some other image that pertains to our lives. We look in the mirror and we see the image of our tired eyes and perhaps the signs of aging or a face masked with foundation, lipstick, and eye makeup. We too forget and fail to see the image that God sees. This passage reminds us that our primary image or identity is as a child of God and stewards of all of creation. In a world right now that is pushing us to identify ourselves in so many ways, Democrat or Republican, left or right, liberal or conservative, religious or not, black or white, and the list goes on. We need to take a step back and reclaim the one identity, the one image that matters above all others. I am a child of God, created in God's image, created to love and serve God, 
created to care for one another and the rest of creation. Perhaps if we focus on that image, all the others will slowly fade away and the world will look a little closer like God intended. In the 2011 movie, The Help, there's a scene where Abilene, a nanny for one of the families, is sitting with May Mobley, a toddler. Little May is not treated very well by her mother. Her mother is consumed with appearances and the things important only to the Southern society. And May Mobley doesn't fit that image. In this scene, Abilene is teaching May to see her inherent value, to see herself made in the image of God. Abilene says, says to May Mobley, you is kind, you is smart, you is important. And they repeat it together. Abilene is reminding May Mobley of her true identity, her true image. When we give to God what is God's, we respond to the world with one true identity, with our true identity, a child of God. We care for all of creation, including the rest of humanity. Just as in Jesus' day, we have obligations to the empire or country in which we live, and we must fulfill those obligations. However, in no way do they remove or diminish our primary allegiance, which is to the one in whose image we've been made. Let's not lose sight of what's most important when we look in the mirror and we, when we look into the eyes of another. May it be so. Let us be in a spirit of prayer together. We, your people, join our hearts across the earth and sing to you, Lord. We sing, we bless your name and tell of your salvation every day. We declare your glory among the nations. We extol your marvelous works among all the peoples. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. You are awesome and we honor you in all of our ways. Nothing made by man compares to you, God. You are the creator of all things seen and unseen. God of mercy, we place our trust in tangible things, things we can see and touch, and question whether you are really there. Forgive us, Holy One, when we fail to recognize that you are always nearby patiently waiting for us to recognize your presence and your glory. Help us when we lose our way and forgive us when we forget to whom we truly belong. Forgive us, God, when we stumble in the darkness and turn away from your face. Strengthen us to walk in your brightness and live in your ways. Enlighten the shadows that keep us from growing in your love and light. Shower us with your grace that we might shine as your people upon this earth. We lift to you all those we continue to pray for in our daily prayers, those near and dear to our hearts. We lift to you those we do not know, but who need to feel your love, grace, and mercy. We lift to you our nation as we prepare to do our civic duty and vote. May our choices come from informed decisions and reflect our values as people of the Christian faith. We turn to you now in our silence to share our deepest prayers with you. Thank you. 
lover of justice. Open our eyes to see you. Open our ears to hear you. Open our hearts to love you. And open our hands to serve you. In the name of Christ, we leave our prayers. Amen. In order to be shared, the loaf must be broken. If it isn't, it does not fulfill its promise. And so we break the bread and give thanks for it. For in its brokenness, we find wholeness. The cup, too, must be poured. One vessel is emptied, so the other might be filled. From the cup, we share the juice. For in its pouring out, we find grace. We do this again and again, as has been done in homes and secret rooms, castles and high cathedrals, in pews and at kneeling rails, knowing that each time we do, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until one day he comes again. Whether we sit or stand, let us come with humbled hearts as we trust in the rising sun, remembering that night when Jesus did the same, when he broke the bread and blessed it and said to his disciples, take and eat, remember me. When he lifted the cup, blessed it and said, take and drink, remember me. Each time we gather at this table, may we eat, drink, and remember. As we continue to worship through technology, I want to take a moment just to say thank you for your continued support during this time through your tithes and offerings. You can donate online via our website at www.fccravenna.org 
or mail your check to 6251 Gladys Street in Ravenna, or utilize bill pay through your banking institution. For many years, we have had the mistaken notion that all the problems of the world can be solved with a few dollars. In Jesus' time, the Pharisees came to ask him if they should pay taxes. And Jesus, looking at a silver coin, asked whose face and name were engraved on it. The emperor's, they said. Well then, pay to the emperor what is his, Jesus replied. Has God's face ever been on a coin? We are the coin that bears the living likeness of God. Giving of ourselves with whatever that may include is the only legal currency of the kingdom of God. Let us share our legal currency as one expression of giving of ourselves so that God's mission here on earth can continue to grow. Let us pray. As we offer our gifts and lives in this moment, God, may you become, may we become imitators of you who hold nothing back from us, but is generous and gracious with all that is yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go now as those who have found favor in the sight of God. Be imitators of Jesus Christ and an example to all of the life of faith. To the world in which you live, give your love and service. And to God, give all that you are and all that you shall be. And may the glory of God's goodness be revealed to you. May the grace and peace of Jesus Christ take root in you. And may the inspiration of the Holy Spirit fill you with joy. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship.